It is Friday, August 23rd, and I have a great show here for you. The news headlines, the weather report, and today in history. This morning, your favorite Russian, Nadia Karitnikova, is in the studio to discuss the week's news and events. Also, Doreen Allen England, the assistant town administrator, um, in addition to Morgan Wallstrom, uh, they're joining us this morning to talk about um, the Summer Work Youth Program. But before any of that, I would like to take this moment to thank Not Your Average Antiques, an antique shop down Cranberry Highway in East Wareham for donating the props that you see in the morning show. So stay tuned because the weather and the news headlines are next. So mostly cloudy out there today. There is a 30% chance of rain and it's now apparent. It's raining outside. High at 80 degrees today um, and tonight low at 57. Tomorrow some sun and some passing clouds. High at 74 and low at 60. Sunday a mix of sunshine and clouds. A slight chance of rain showers. We do not know at what particular time yet and uh, high at 71 and low at 61. And that's all for the weather. There were plenty of news stories, and here are the news headlines. Okay, Wareham Week had the following. Plymouth County began conducting a second round of spraying uh, for mosquitoes on Wednesday, the spray in both aerial and from trucks will take place over the next few evenings, weather permitting. Wareham has been deemed to be at critical risk for the potentially deadly mosquito-borne Eastern Equine Encephalitis Virus, also known as Triple E. As of August 20, it was among 37 communities at either high or critical risk. Uh, according to the Department of Public Health. And to another news, a Wayham man was honored with Bronze Star for his extreme performance in acts of combat on December 16th in 1944. Bradford Holmes, who fought in the Battle of the Bulge and survived being a prisoner of war, was also named the legendary um, of the century by Ted Hatch of the Wayham American Legion Post number 220. Uh, born in Onset in 1925, Holmes was drafted into the Army at the age of 18 years old and was deployed to fight in World War II. Uh, Holmes described being trapped in um, a freight train for 10 days as prisoner as the train was bombed by Allied forces who had no idea it was full of American troops and of being held in a prison camp for six months and that's all for today's news we'll be we'll take a short break and we'll be back with nadia
So welcome back. My favorite Russian, Nadia Karitakova, is in the studio this morning to digest the week's news and events. Welcome, my friend. Hi, Corinne. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Let's start with the casino, and I hope you educate us exactly what's taking place. Hopefully. Yeah, Hopefully. let's try. You got to explain, explain, explain. So, mm -hmm. for what I have gathered from your reporting, from Wicked Local Reporting, because yes. I didn't attend the meeting, Notice Group, right? Correct. Quincy-based Notice Group. Yes. Yeah. They formed in purpose of uh, proposing this casino, uh, which they are hoping to um, develop it on 275-acre parts of land on Glen Cherry Road in East Wareham that abuts Route 25. Um, they emphasized on the potential benefits if this deal passes through. Mm -hmm. That is the five million in annual revenue for the town. Correct. That is a thousand permanent jobs, a thousand construction, construction jobs in town. Um, but however, the plan requires state legislators to change the state's 2011 uh, expanding expanded gaming act correct okay so let's start with this mm -hmm. let's start with what they're talking about how big is this casino what is the nature of this casino so the casino would go in pair in hand in hand with um, horse racing so it would be one it would be called a Wareham park it would generally speaking is going to be one huge entertainment park mm -hmm. with uh, gaming entertainment Okay. Uh, Gabling Entertainment Park, so to say. It would have uh, machine slots um, and uh, online gaming, which I'm not quite sure what it is yet. Mm. So, But it would not have table games. That's very important. Okay, so racetrack? Yes, one mile long horsing, okay. horse Ro racing track. track yeah. Yes, permanent. Sports facility. Stables for app approximately 500 horses. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, but no table games. No, no table games. And okay, so that's the key, right? So this mm -hmm. symbolizes a smaller casino. So to say smaller, which the thing is that if we were to build, not we, I'm generally speaking, we were mm -hmm. to build a full-size casino, which would have table games and slot machines, mm -hmm. the group would have to develop, invest $500 million in that. Mm -hmm. They only want to invent $300 million because it's a smaller casino that would not have tables, mm -hmm. but would only have uh, slot machines, which would require mu much less people, much less effort to build. Okay. Yes. So with that, then, they're asking the state to change the 2011 mm -hmm. uh, Expanded Gaming Act, Correct. which will g provide them with that exception. And my question to you was, if they grant such exception, does it mean the, we are still open, uh, we still have the opportunity to build a, a full, a bigger casino? Uh, that's a great question. And uh, can I just explain a little bit uh, to our listeners mm -hmm. that uh, Massachusetts is split into three regions, A, B, and C. We are Region C, okay. which encompasses Bristol, Plymouth, Nantucket, Dukes, and Bristol counties. And each state requires, not requires, allows mm. each region to have one big casino, which re requires $500 million investment and have table games and slot games. S let's call it big casino. Mm -hmm. Each region can have only one big casino. Okay. And for the whole state, we can have only one small casino, which will only have slot games, mm. which is exact, and it would require $300 million investment, which is exactly what not as group wants to build. Okay. But the problem is that we already have a, so to say, small casino in our state. Where is it located? It's located, just a second, I will tell you. Um, it's called um, Plain Bridge Park Casino. Okay, yes. in Plain Bridge. Mm -hmm, correct. It's not very far from and us. And that is located on... Okay, this is not very impressive map. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't, expect I didn't expect my work to take appearance <laughs> on TV. <laughs> Which, which region for us? Is it A, B, or? Uh, this is generally speaking. We, we're at this region. Okay. Um, and uh, what was your question? Uh, Plainville, the small casino is located on which region? I think it's region B. Region B? Yes. Is it say Plainville then? Okay. So, all right, region B. Yes. So, region B already claimed a tiny little casino. Exactly, which means we cannot have another small casino in the States. So, region B has both a bigger casino and a small casino. Correct, yes. Okay, region A, bigger casino. Region exactly. C is still open for, for a big only casino. a big casino, but our notice group is looking to have uh, some rules. They're looking for a leeway here. Okay, so 
our town um, officials, and by town officials, I'm going to go with selectmen because those are the ones you quoted in the article. Correct. They were celebrating. This is a good thing for Wareham, right? Exactly. So the question is, why would we want to settle for a smaller casino? Why not a big one? Is it just because they proposed it in Wareham? Yes, actually, that's a good point. <laughs> you hit it right over the park. <laughs> As uh, Alan Slavin said, mm. people want um, libraries, people want uh, community buildings, they want all the stuff, which is good. Mm. But Slavin said that we cannot build all the stuff just based on the taxpayer's money. Mm -hmm. We need another source of income. Well, we, we said the same thing with marijuana. We need another source exactly. of income. We need yes. marijuana. Apparently, marijuana income is not enough. It's not enough, and we need to consider that a lot of chunk of marijuana money is going to police department, okay. which is good, but we need another chunk of money that will go into the broader uh, benefit of the town. All right, so we are hoping this casino is going to be our bailout. Exactly, and it will bring a lot of money, $500 million each year. Now, they are proposing, they are also uh, enticing us with a 1,000 jobs, full-time, permanent jobs. Mm -hmm. Somebody, on the way here, we commented, mm -hmm. we can barely provide employees for Wendy's. How are we going to provide a thousand employees for the casino? Um, this is a great point. When I went to the selectment meeting and uh, we spoke to Tom McConnell, um, the guy who <laughs> basically in charge of all this mm. project, he said that um, people were actually calling him and asking already for a job in this place because people are so willing to work that he was... But is it a thousand people? Not a thousand, of course, but I think Wendy's is just a bad example of what happened in Wareham. I don't think it represents our town at all. I think there are a lot of people who want to work. Tell us about the nature of Glen Cherry Road okay. uh, and Route 25. Mm -hmm. There is issue of traffic. I mean, how impactful will it be? You ju just give us a sense of okay, that's how, a good what point. you have observed. So the... The Parker Bus Route 25, mm -hmm. and uh, it's also right next to the Glen Charlie Road mm -hmm. in East Wareham. Sorry, I'm just looking at the map. Oh, absolutely. And uh, they want to build interchange from Route 25 mm -hmm. to the Wareham Park. And uh, they're claiming that, uh, sorry, I'm just, I'm not a road expert, but they're claiming that it will mitigate the traffic on Glen Charlie Road mm -hmm. because people have um, another access to the Route 25. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm sorry, it's very complicated. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure how it will mitigate the traffic, but uh, it will. <laughs> Let's trust them. <laughs> I need to bring them here to explain them. Yes, exactly, because this is the, I think this is one of the few topics that I'm not very familiar with, the roads. Now, the, the Wampanoag, Wampanoag? Wampanoag, mm -hmm, right? I do not want to mispronounce their name. Uh, the Wampanoag tr uh, tribe, they have been fighting for a casino. Yes. If they get it or if we get it, that's the, that's the last one, apparently. Uh, yeah, okay? exactly, the last one. We cannot have a big one after this. And so, and normally casinos are associated with Indians. That's their thing they do. They build casinos. So with this, do you really think this we will get the chance to build this casino, especially where Wampanoag's been fighting for this to build a casino on their land for years now, and they're still in court? Um, I think to be honest, yes. From what I got, selectment already they support this decision. From what I got, there no, we are supporting this. Uh, but yes, the of Wampanoag course. Wampanoag are not supporting yes. this. Yes. Yes. So what was your question exactly? Meaning, do you really think this is something that could happen in Wareham, given that another, a, a tribe, a Native American tribe, is fighting for the same opportunity? They need to present the benefit they will give to the town. I think just based on the benefit the Notus Group will give to Wareham, I think they are winning already in this competition. But we need to see what benefit, benefits the tribe would be willing to bring. Okay. All right, so what's next? What's going on? You also want to talk about Triple E. They are spraying. They're yes. not spraying today. They're, uh, today's 23rd, right? Yes. Yeah, they are spraying today. I think today's the last Even day. Even with actually. the rain? Actually, weather permitting, no, they must, might postpone. Okay. That's a good point, actually. What, what times do they spray? They usually spray it in the evening. Okay. Yes. And everything, trucks and area sprays, and to some parts, right? 
I actually learned that if you do not want to have your property sprayed, you let yes, it through. which I I, don't know, I find it weird. I feel like it defeats the whole purpose of spraying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's supposed to protect the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, g still, I know that Cat has moved some of her well her night events, evening events indoors. The Summer of Love concert was exactly. Um, however, Bourne, since I live in Bourne, uh, downtown there, they mm -hmm. had their their version of Summer of Love, which happens on Thursdays. Yes. It was outside. It's always been outside. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. So it's funny how different communities are responding differently while we are all in the same region. Exactly. Labeled at critical risk. Okay. We know patient zero came yeah. from Rochester. Yeah. Okay, came from Rochester. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's not doing so well, is he? Yes, he's not doing so well. Uh, last time I heard. Yeah. I'm afraid I didn't want to say it on TV, but he might be in coma. And that's what it was printed. That's oh, okay. That's what it, it was printed okay, then on the paper. So this, once again, this is a very critical thing. And so people are treating it all differently. Exactly, yes. Yeah, that's can, weird. I guess at the end of the day, you just have to be smart. Exactly, and, handle it yourself. and protect yourself. I can. Okay, what events are happening this weekend? So tomorrow is going to be a very busy day. We're going to have an um, antique roadshow. Where? At uh, All Assisted American Living. Okay. At 300 uh, Rosebrook mm -hmm. Way. It's from 9 to 11, 30 a.m. Yeah. And then we have uh, Ashley Faye's uh, Fun Day mm -hmm. in the memory of Ashley Faye Fun Day and uh, Big Rose Day. Mm -hmm. at, uh, Ball uh, Park, the way, uh, sorry, Veterans Center. Okay. And um, from 2 to 6. And we are also having Meet Me at the Tremon from 5.30 to 10. Oh. Right. Um, You're covering all those events? Yes. <laughs> Very nice. I can't Thanks. wait to read your articles. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so that was Nadia Karitnokova, our weekly news correspondent here digesting the week's news and upcoming events tomorrow. We are going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will be viewing Art Farm to learn a little bit more about Art Farm. Well, hello, Wehem. Today we're coming to you from Art Farm, which is located right on Main Street in Wehem. This place is where inspiration and creativity runs freely. With me is Diane Enzian, who is the owner of this beautiful property, and today we are her guests. Could we take a look at the park? Of course you may. Thank you. Come Thank on you. In. Oh, why don't you take me to the moon? Fly with you in a balloon And there you'll kiss me And we will walk back to you okay. Well, thank you so much for having us here today. I am very curious to learn about the history of this beautiful property. I found out years ago when I first bought this property that um, it was part of the Toby Homestead. Yes originally which was a lot of farmland mm -hmm. and this area has a lot of stone walls in it that were built back in that time i also found out that the back side of my stone wall is the marker for the old sto stagecoach road that used to bypass the hill mm -hmm. when they, before they had automobiles was this was actually called and some people still call it south wareham south wareham this one section okay Oh, this is just happening all too soon. My life looks like a cartoon. And then you kiss me, and I'm all stuck with you. Now, you, you told me before, you said when you came here the first time you saw this property, oh. it wasn't so promising. <laughs> but you, all, you, know, you looked beyond that. And part of it is due to how you were raised, where you came from. Right. Could you tell us? A little bit more about that? Well, growing up, I had three brothers, and one of them loved the outdoors. And he was nice enough to take his little sister with him all the time. So I learned a lot about the outdoors from my brother David, and pollywogs, and salamanders, and all those fun things. And my mother was appalled. Yeah. Her first daughter was coming home with things in her pocket. But that's 
initiated my love of the outdoors. After 31 years working for the post office, Diane retired. Her current work revolves around her garden, growing her artwork. She opened up Art Farm Stand this summer, inviting the public to admire, learn, and be inspired. Featuring photographs from her garden, painted slates, herbs, Cape Cod decor wreath, and more. Each art piece is unique. This one here is on from a 600-year-old barn. They took the roof slates off a 600-year-old barn. In, this was from Montana. Um, and they're thicker than the ones that you find around here. Because every quarry does it different, and depending on where they're going to be building, what they wanted for the size and the thickness of you the could slate. tell. It's so layered. Yeah. Oh, this is just happening all too soon. My life looks like a curtain. And then you kiss me, and I'm all set with you. Oh. I love the story of Rasta. All right, these are smudge kits. The Native Americans and a lot of other Native cultures across the world actually have similar um, practices. What they do in Native America is you take a shell from the local beach, mm. and then they take herbs like sage. Right and what they do is you dry the sage, and you can crumple it up, and you put it in the base of the shell. Okay. And then you light the shell, and it will smolder. Yeah. Just make the smoke. And you take a native feather, and this is a wild turkey feather. And what you do is it's a ceremony of blessings. You, you wish good blessings or positive energy on your home, on your family, when someone's sick, when you have a new baby, anything. It's a way of celebrating life and, and to spread positive is what it is. Some people say it's more about getting rid of the negative. The way I look at it, it's more spreading the positive. Yes. If you spread the positive, you automatically get rid of the negative, right? <laughs> My posted hours are 11 to 6, Thursdays through Saturdays. Very good. <laughs> well, as for that, this concludes our tour. Thank you so much and have a lovely day. Bye. Do, 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 do you. Well, welcome back. So now for our second um, segment of the day. This is a live um, interview here. I am joined with Dore Doreen Allen England, who is the assistant town administrator. Also Morgan Wollstrom. What's your title? I'm the summer youth coordinator. Summer youth coordinator. Okay, so our topic this morning is the summer youth uh, work program that the students just graduated from yesterday. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. That Thank was you. quite the beautiful uh, thing to see you guys yesterday because I didn't even know such a thing was taking place. Thank you. Yeah. You yeah. really acknowledge the hard work that the kids put in over the summer. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with you, Doreen. Mm -hmm. Sure. Let's talk about the program. Okay. When it started okay. and what it is. Um, we started it mid-June this year. Mm -hmm. um, the first process was posting and hiring for Morgan's position as summer youth coordinator. Once we had Morgan on board, uh, we posted and we accepted applications from Wareham Youths. Mm -hmm. um, between the ages of 14 and 17, uh, we had them fill out employment applications. We tried to have their parents not complete the applications for them okay. um, and then we set them up for real interviews where we asked them a series of 10 to 12 questions to get them ready um, for a professional interview later in their life in their career after that they were um, assigned Morgan worked with the department heads the boys club Buzzards Bay Coalition um, and various um, groups in the town and mm. scheduled projects for the kids to complete and the goal was to expose the kids to as many municipal functions and departments while giving them um, skills that they can use later in life. So uh, they did some amazing projects. They had fun. They were a fantastic group of kids, and they earned some money. They earned so some money. That's they a good did. thing. <laughs> they did. So you said this is the first year. It's the first year I've been involved. Okay. I think the program was funded a few years ago. Right. I know... Um, 
we operated one or two years, but I wasn't involved in that process. Mm -hmm. So Derek Sullivan, the town administrator, really wanted to put a lot of effort and time into it this year and promote the kids. Promote the kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you, you come in, you were managing the kids, right? Yes. Day to day. Yes. So tell me how it was like. So they would come in on, they worked Monday through Thursday, um, nine to one, so four hours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and each week was a, something a little different. I didn't want them to be doing the same thing every week. Um, so one week they would say they would be in the Department of Natural Resources, and then maybe next week they were helping at the library. So it really just, you know, it, I just want to expose them to as much of what we had to offer as I could. So Now I take it working for the town was, mm -hmm. it could be a little different from working in, what are we, McDonald's? Yeah. It's a different kind of summer job, right? It really was, and it, it really opened their eyes to different departments. Um, one girl worked in accounting and now wants to major in accounting in college. We had another girl who was fascinated with our Department of Natural Resources because the kids went out on the boats and actually worked on the shellfish habitats and cleaned out the wells with our aqua um, cultural technician. Mm -hmm. And now she wants to go into environmental sciences and biology. So it really exposed them to different jobs in the town. Um, I feel like it's like an internship. It was, but they pay, they get paid. They get paid. Yeah. Well, that's the, you have to have the credit version of the internships yes. Yes. paid, yes. which was great that they got paid. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one of my questions, too. So tell me about the selection process. How many mm -hmm. kids came out? came out for this opportunity? I think we had 10 kids apply. Mm -hmm. We accepted them all right at the end of the interview um, because they were so nervous. They were really, you know, it was their first experience being put on the spot, asked questions, asked what they wanted to do with their future, um, and then asked simple questions like, what's your favorite subject in school? I think Morgan liked to always ask them. Yeah. And from that, we learned really what their preferences were in the job market and some of them wanted just to work in the library or the accounting department others wanted to be outside on the boats mm -hmm. or um, watching the police cruises so we kind of tailored the assignments to their likes and dislikes some of all of them had to paint and <laughs> clean the beaches yes. <laughs> so Very nice. um, some of them loved it others didn't yeah. but they all did it okay. and they all did it um, with a smile on their face so Nadia was telling me even though one may choose a particular position, you get to move them around? Yes. Yes. Okay. Every day was something different. Every day something different. Mm -hmm. Now, were there any kids who came back from last year that they did the program before and decided to come back? Uh, we didn't run it last year. Oh, okay. Um, I know almost all of them want to come back next year. Yeah. They all asked yesterday so. if we're running it next year. So. Oh, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm hoping that you the program looks to expand or just keep it as it is? What's the future look like? We're hoping to bring it back. It really depends on funding. It depends on funding. Yes. And so where's the funding for this particular program coming from? Um, this went out to annual town meeting mm -hmm. and it was voted on a few years ago and it was funded. Um, so we'll have to see what our funding looks like going forward for next summer. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So how deeply into the regular day-to-day -day work did they get into? Like. How much work do they have to do or learning? It really depended on the assignment. Like one of the youth workers was assigned to the accounting department and she worked on a vendor project and she learned data entry in our systems. Um, some of the kids went to the library and they helped organize and reshelve the books. We have a new town clerk and she needed um, some documents and boxes organized and they reorganized her office. So it really depended on the day and the assignment. Okay. Um, is there a potential to have this program year-round or as kids go to school they can come back on the weekends, help out? We discussed it. It mm. is difficult because of sports okay. and after-school activities. So I think it's a great way, a great program for the summer because it allows the kids to work a few hours a day, still have their days in their summer to enjoy while earning some money and helping the town. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your experience with the students, how it was like. Um, so it was good to get to know them all. They all have different personalities and it was, they were such hard workers. Whenever mm -hmm. I need them to come in or someone couldn't come in, they were always willing to, you know, step up and come in. And I mean, 
they didn't love the painting because they would How come much back. Painting did they do? What they painted that? um in onset the like the light post okay. with the municipal maintenance worker. Um and they would come back covered in paint. And, but <laughs> you know, they had fun doing it and like the municipal worker like was so nice to them and taught them what to do. So they were hard workers and they loved it and mm. It was, I don't know, it was fun for all of us, so. You mentioned mm -hmm. the library. Mm -hmm. What other jobs were they? They, uh, <laughs> um, they worked in almost all of the departments, okay. so um, the Department of Natural Resor Resources, mm -hmm. inspections, um, the clerk's office, what else? Florida um, Health. Learning Florida how Health, to file. Yeah. yeah. It, the library, um, Deacus School, Wareham yeah. Middle School, um, the Boys and Girls Club, so they got a little bit of everything, which is exactly what we wanted. And the department heads made that possible because they were so willing to invite them in and teach them what they do day to day. So it was good. Very cool. Yeah. Very nice. And they yeah. had a little graduation yesterday. They did. Yeah, they did. And they were all very excited to be interviewed by you. And by <laughs> um, so as the program moves forward and mm -hmm. those who are listening to this interview today parents or even students what kind of student you're looking for or what kind of student will be best fit for mm -hmm. this particular program all of them all, <laughs> all of them all are you them. Anyone, <laughs> anyone who's willing to put in the effort to you know attend the interview um you know to come every day or their scheduled days to work and enjoy absolutely we don't turn anybody away you do not turn anybody no away. Okay. no we had different personalities we had different mm -hmm. needs and I think Morgan fulfilled them you know if one individual just wanted the library and didn't want to clean the beaches um, he or she may be able to go to the library for the day <laughs> while the others clean the beaches um, so we we catered to their wants um, but also we exposed them to a vast variety of the departments and municipal government. Um, they all clean the police cruises. Very, oh, I would yes. think that's fun. It was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, so, so the, the program's future depends on funding, yes. which gets approved during town meeting. So are we waiting for this fall town meeting? I don't know okay. at this point if it's oh. going to be presented to this town meeting. Yeah. Well, it was a neat thing. It, it seems was. like they all had fun. Mm -hmm. It was very fun, yeah. Um, I hope that it continues next year, and I hope what, some of them will come and talk about what they did. That Nobody showed up this morning. No, <laughs> I didn't. They were all camera shy. They, they were. were. We <laughs> did try to persuade them. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, thanks mm -hmm. to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. So that was uh, Doreen Allen England, the Assistant Town Administrator, and Morgan Wallstrom here to talk about um, the summer work program that the students from high school, Wareham High School, participated in this summer. They graduated from it yesterday. Yes. Um, and the program future all depends on funding, which you will get to approve during town meeting. So at least you know what the program is about. So when the issue arises, you know what to do. Anyhow, we're going to take a break and we'll be back with more. Are you tired of having to send money for your Office 365 subscription? Are you looking for other programs that you don't have to pay for? Here are a couple of solutions to some open source programs that you might want to check out. If you want a few great alternatives to Microsoft Office, try Apache OpenOffice or LibreOffice. Both are fantastic alternatives. Keep in mind that if you still need to create a Microsoft Word or Excel document, both are able to save files in the right formats. Another popular replacement for Microsoft Office is my personal favorite, Docs, which you can use free if you have a Gmail account. You can also use Google Slides for spreadsheets and Slides for slideshows, while saving files is easy if you use your Google Drive. If you're in the market for a new 
photo editing program, try Paint.net, which is completely free. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles that Photoshop has, but it can still do basic photo, edit, photo editing, adjusting, and airbrushing. Another nifty program to try out if you're into sound editing is Audacity, which you can use on either a Windows or a Macintosh computer. Just search for Paint.net or Audacity on Google, and you can download both for free. If you're interested in learning about the basics of Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and organizing files, come to our free intermediate computer classes, which will run on September 5th, September 12th, and September 19th next month at 1.30 p.m. on Thursdays here at the main library. You can also check out our website to find out more about our basic computer skills, class, skills classes. If you have any questions or would like to register for any of these classes, you can contact me at the library at smiller at salesinc.org or you can call my extension at 508-295-2343, extension 1012. Thank you for joining me on this week's episode of Checkout of the Week from the Wareham Free Library. Another Summer of Love podcast episode. I'm here with Amy, who is the violinist, but she also has a lot of other talents within Forever Young. And she just played here at the VFW tonight. So how are you doing, Amy? Great. We had a fun night. It was a great crowd tonight. Do you play often in this town or in this area? Uh, we're playing in Plymouth in a couple of weeks, and we play around different places, Southern Rhode Island, sometimes we're in Massachusetts. That's awesome. Um, what inspired you to be a part of a tribute band for Neil Young? Um, I heard this band um, for a while before I joined it, and I really liked it, and um, I love the music, and they were you know, really high energy and a lot of fun. And um, so. I knew John, and he asked me to join, and then and I was like, sure, definitely. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was great to join. I joined about eight years ago. So how have you grown as an artist being a part of the band for over eight years? Um, I think my improvisation on the violin has improved a lot, and harmonizing and everything like that, and singing. So yeah, I mean, you just get better and better as a group, too. You, you learn to play with other people and get it to be really tight. So we all get along great, and we love to play together. I know that the band has won many awards as being one of the best tribute bands in the area. Do you want to talk about your awards that you've won over the years? Uh, they've won the Motif Magazine Award Best Tribute Band a number of times. And there was another award near Boston, I think it was the Limelight yeah. Music Award. Is there anything you want to talk about, how you love performance and just what got you into performance in general? Uh, well, I studied music in college and I was always studied violin from being a kid, but I also like to sing and I took voice lessons in college and um, started to branch out of classical music and play with other people um, with the violin and sing. I started to pick up a little bit of guitar to sing, so I wanted to play out in the public and sing more, mm -hmm. so it was a lot of fun, and just learning different kinds of music is a lot of fun, too. Is there anything else that you would like to say tonight, or about just your performance in general? Uh, I just think this is a great community, and we had a blast, and the really high energy audience was wonderful tonight. Thank you so much, Amy, for interviewing. Check them out. They're going to be playing September 7th at the Spire Center in Plymouth. Thank you so much for meeting tonight, and this is our Summer Love Podcast. Hi everybody, I'm Leticia Botino from WCTV and I'm here with Marie Ferrara from the Wayham Middle School Care Program, Operation Grand Pals. Missy Diesick, the Director of the Wareham Council on Aging. Taylor Gold, the Activity Director at All American Assisted Living in Wareham. 
And we're here at the Operation Grand Pals Luncheon in Wareham in the Middle School Library. So what is this event about and how did it start? The class started three years ago. CARE has a lot of different classes like drama, gardening, music, chorus, and we wanted something new and refreshing. So we started to see that the seniors and the students were lacking a connection. So we decided to start an intergenerational program that bridged that gap between the young and the older generation and that's the birth of Operation Grand Files. I am the activity director and um, Marie contacts me and she sets up visits to come over to um, visit our residents over at the All-American Assisted Living. I run the Council on Aging right across the way, so this is a great opportunity. We can walk right over here and the kids can walk right over to the Council on Aging and entertain us and interact with our seniors, which is great. This is the last week of care. So the students run the class. I just approve everything. They facilitate the whole thing from the luncheon with Kathy Martin and ask her if she would be willing to, in her cooking class, cook food for them and she baked cookies, to the decorations, going to the other classes and asking them to create things for the luncheon. They email everybody, they take care of everything. So they were instrumental in the whole luncheon process of emailing the invitations, emailing the media, calling Lindsay's who donated the salad for this luncheon. We only have five weeks. So in five weeks, this was the result of what the students did. Hello and thank you for being with us this morning. We are broadcasting live from our WCTV studio. This is Good Morning Wayham, your source for local news, weather, traffic, and more information. And now for a moment in history, let's take a look at where we were today in history. So today in state history, the state of Franklin declares independence in 1784. Franklin was in what is now modern day Tennessee and became its own country, no sorry, co yeah, country from 1784 to 1788. It was once a part of North Carolina. But land was given up being owned by Congress as a territory. The denizens of the area were afraid their land would be sold to the Spanish or the French. So those that lived there petitioned for Franklin to be a new state. After that failed, after that failed to pass, Franklin declared its independence. They rejoined North Carolina years later after attacks from Native Americans. Also today in baseball history, Pete Rose receives a lifetime ban from baseball in 1989. This infamous falling out between the MLB and the all-time leader in hits was a result of Rose's sports betting. He was by no means the first baseball player to be caught betting on the games he was involved in Another example being in 1919, White Sox who lost the World Series on purpose. There is much debate to this day as to if he should be given another chance. That is Pete Rose if he should be given another chance. For today's birthday, shout out goes to Barbara Eden, born Barbara Jean Moorhead on August 24th, 23rd in 1931. She is an American film, she's an American film stage and television actress and singer, best known for her starring role of Jeannie in the sitcom I Dream of Jeannie. That is Barbara Eden, uh, 
Happy birthday to her and everybody else celebrating the big day today. That's all for today in history segment. To learn more cool historical facts, you can go online under history.com. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll be cooking with Scott Record. <music> You'll get to see it, we'll get to taste it, and you'll get to make it. Well, here we are at Scott Record again. Going to make something real spectacular, I think. And just to be honest, this is my own personal creation. Five or six years ago, if you went into popular restaurants with seafood. Nobody had lobster pot pie. The way it came to me, I love chicken pot pie. So I decided, well, here I am. I'm, I live in the Cape. How about lobster pot pie? <sighs> lobster pot pie. So put it all together. It took me about eight attempts to make it the way I liked it. Because you can't make lobster pot pie with a chicken gravy. So I figured, what can I use that would be lobster? <gasps> lobster Newburgh sauce. It's got a little bit of sherry in it, or it could be cognac. But it's got, it, there's egg yolks, there's cream, there's the same vegetables. So I did that, and I put it all together, and I used regular pie crust. It was too much crust. It was too crusty. It was all crusty crust. So I've refined it by... Uh, several different methods and now I like to use ramekins like a 10 ounce ramekin which is the little porcelain round circular dish and I put the uh, the fixings inside chunks of lobster all the vegetables uh, whole cream a little bit of little bit of sherry and then on top like eight to ten layers of phyllo pastry it comes out just right so this is how we're gonna start this is what we're gonna do Okay, I'm back and I'm gonna do a man another magic trick. Nothing in my hands.
Presto. Magic trick. This is, look at this, this is lobster meat. I'd like you to meet my little friend. This was a five and a half pound lobster. Uh, steamed it, I prefer steaming it. Decent sized chunks, but then I've kept big pieces of claw meat that I will be able to use on the tops of my presentation. Hold on, I'm also gonna show you this. Presto. All right, this is phyllo dough, Greek phyllo dough. It's very, very, very thin dough. I've had this sitting out for two hours after it was sitting all night in the refrigerator because it's frozen in the store. But I like extra virgin olive oil. That helps the butter. So the hardest thing, the hardest, the most solid, the most firm vegetable I'm going to cook are the carrots. So I want to put them in first. I want those, it takes a while for them to soften. And that is about a cup of carrots. Now, what makes it for me with this recipe is the pearl onions. They're little, they're tiny, they're sweet. Parboiled them, put them in an ice bath, cut the tips off and these shallots are minced up so small, and this is about half a cup of shallots. And it can be a little bit on the, yeah, it's, a, it's more like three quarters of a cup of shallots. Get them in there, saute those babies a little bit, because this onion source goes into the sauce and makes the sauce good. So now to add to this sauteing, just to get it warmed up, will be lobster meat. And I am not bashful with the lobster meat. I'm gonna make up a, a few portions of this, so this just stays in for a little while just to get warm. Himalayan red salt, pink salt. Now I am going to put a little bit of nutmeg in. And then I'm also going to put some of those cane peppers that I had. And it's going to be very, very small amount. That should do it. And that's for me. Now, do I want cognac or do I want sherry? I think cognac because the cognac has a bigger, broader nose to it. Just want to make sure it hasn't gone bad. Cognac is only wine that's 500 years old, so I don't think it's gone bad yet. But this is cool. I'm going to put in about three tablespoons and a half of cognac. This is the fresh parsley from the garden. And I'm going to put at least a cup maybe two.
drizzle it in very easily because if it goes in all at once, it'll end up being scrambled eggs. These egg yolks will make this thicken up nicely. It's time to assemble my lobster pot pie with a Newberg sauce. And we're, these are the 10 ounce Pyrex baking dishes that I was talking about. I'm going to see how many I'm going to get out of this filling. And then we put the phyllo on. But it looks like I'm only going to get six on this cookie tin. So let's do six to start with and see what we get. It's all in here, man. This is cooking, baby. So we are going to take these with big chunks of lobster. Peas, look at that. How good does that look? That looks so sensational. Dad, Dad, why do you scrape the pan? Because that's the profits. All right. Who's got a little bit too much? Why don't you give up some of this over here? How about you giving up some of that over here? Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looking go, man. Looking good, man, the six. Where do you see the ending? You ha the ending includes, and rightly so, phyllo pastry. This is a roll of phyllo pastry that is thoroughly defrosted. Now, you can see these beautiful sheets of pastry, and that's good. Now, they will dry out so quickly. So I'm going to take a piece of plastic wrap that's bigger than they are and just put it over them like that. And then I will take a dish towel, a clean dish towel, wet it. I did this before, so you really soak it up really good and then wring it out so it's like just wrung dry goes over the whole thing. And when you need to, you just flip it back and deal with it. This is good. Lobster pot pie with the essence of Newberg sauce. And... Okay. So what Scott was trying to say that there will be more videos coming. I'm not sure why we cut that video short. But anyhow, the video is on YouTube. You can also go and see the ending. And we'll be producing another segment with Scott very soon. With that, thank you so much for joining us this morning. If you missed us, this show will be rebroadcasted this evening at 6 p.m. And we'll be back on Monday with some more for you. And this episode will also go on YouTube under Wareham Community Television on YouTube. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful weekend, Wareham. Bye.